Alright, so this is going to be kind of a longer video, but uh, I'll try to make the intro as quick as possible. April and I went to Nashville. We absolutely loved it. Great town. It's got a lot of history, a lot of great music, and we stopped by the Ryman, which used to be where the Grand Old Opry was. And it had these great windows with an equilateral arch on them. And uh, we picked up a Hatch Print Show poster, and we wanted something special to kind of commemorate the trip and to store such a, a wonderful poster with a, a great heritage. And so we made this poster frame. And uh, stick with it. The video's got a lot of great info. There's um, uh, the, the process, how I made the arch, the template that I kind of used, setting up the strings to draw it all out. The finish is captured this time. I also use pocket hole joinery and dominoes with this. You can do either. And uh, I also covered how to make a template to use with your router so you can perfectly replicate the arch and have a symmetrical arch. And if you want to mo make more than one of these, you can use that to in increase not only your accuracy, but also the repeatability so that you could do two or three of these and still have them all look the same. Watch the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comments. Take care. All right, so first step of this whole project is trying to figure out the proper way of marking an equilateral tri or a equilateral arch, which is what the Ryman uses for some of its windows, and found out that uh, it really is as simple as just putting a nail at one end, making sure the strings the length from where the nail would be at the other end, drawing the incomplete circle. By doing that, it gives you the really nice arch. I confirmed that with a blue tape. You can see that I had a few trial runs trying to figure out the best way to do this. And um, once I was able to, to nail down the way I was going to draw the, the arch, uh, I pulled in a piece of uh, scrap plywood that I would use to draw the arch on and then I would cut that out and make my temple. So here I am on the bandsaw, just a quick cut. Then I'm going to go over to the oscillating spindle sander, clean that up, make sure I have a nice even radius. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to use a, um, whatever that's called, <laughs> to, uh, to make the, the uh, outside dimension for this template, the compass. It's a compass. And another trip to the oscillating spindle sander. Now that I have my rough template, I'm going to go ahead and mark out the um, outline on my cut pieces. So I'm going to cut this off at the great alarm saw. Or, <laughs> I'm just not getting anything right today. At the miter saw. <laughs> And I'm, I'm also making the cuts while I'm at this station to, um, for my, my side and uh, width pieces for the actual poster frame itself. And to make sure all of this is consistent, I'm going to go ahead and uh, joint and plane, make sure everything's the same thickness. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my arch uh, pieces from their board. You want to get as close to the line as you can without actually cutting to the line. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create that template, a 
talked about in the intro where um, we can use some double-sided turner's tape here and attach the two pieces together then we can attach the template to these and use a pattern routing bed in order to get a perfect replicating replication so that these pieces are exactly the same and if I ever want to make another poster that matches reuse this template and have a the same size arch for both pieces here's that uh, pattern bed or flush trim bit with a, a bearing and you want to go in and take light passes don't want to take this too heavy generally speaking you don't want to put your template over a uh, through the sanding operation but I did sorry Now I, uh, I'm going over to my tape template here, lining things up so I can go ahead and mark um, the angle that the two pieces are going to meet at. So all I did was set the very tip at the intersection point and then where it overlapped I put a, a little tick mark and um, now I'm connecting the uh, outside edge and the inside tick mark and that's my angle. So I have both pieces clamped together to ensure I have a consistent angle. And you'll notice for some reason the blade kicked out at the end here so I'm going to have to um, you know, trim that back up. If you've got a critical uh, angle, make sure you kind of do a visual inspection before you move it um, on these right arm or these um, miter saws. Now I'm going to cut the, the rails and the styles for the poster frame. And I figured I'd go with uh, a different method other than mortise and tenon or dominoes. So I'm going with pocket holes. Just make sure you offset the pocket holes um, enough that the um, rabbit you create later for your poster frame, your poster and materials to sit in, um, that rabbit doesn't interfere with your, um, your screws or your, your pocket holes. And I put a little glue, clamped it flat, and um, screwed together. Nothing special there. And why not? I've got dominoes, I'm so <laughs> I'm going to use them. This is a, a perfect joint for that. A pocket hole would have also been um, good for this. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that you know this this was as rock solid as it could be. You'll notice I haven't cut the ends of this yet. I'm actually going to use the piece itself to mark um, how to cut the other ends of these pieces. Because this isn't a structural joint, I'm just going to kind of press fit it close together, then, um, then make sure that they stay uh, parallel to each other by clamping them to the table surface. I like to put wax paper down to prevent my projects from sticking to my workbench. Pro tip of the day. 
Now the difference <clears throat> between center on these to eight and three quarters of an inch was less than a sixteenth of an inch. So this is a center rule. I put it eight, eight and three quarters on one side, marked the center, put it at eight and three quarters, shifting the ruler over to the other side, marked that. The gap in between those two marks is then what I lined up the T-square edge. I made sure that the center joint on the arch was equal with the, um, the center of the frame. Then I went through and marked uh, where to cut this piece. So next up we're going to create the rabbit so that we can uh, you know, put the poster frame and everything in. I got this measurement uh, of, of depth of about half an inch based off the material thickness of the plywood that I'm going to use uh, behind the poster. Uh, I didn't add anything for the poster, but then also the, thick, the thickness of the plexiglass that we're going to have um, in front of the poster. And then that leaves me enough space for the point uh, nailer that I have to secure all that in place. And it's a quarter inch from the inside face um, into the frame. And I find that to be plenty of uh, purchase, so to speak, for um, the poster and, and whatnot to prevent anything from sagging or, or working itself loose over time. And I, I did have to prop this up because the um, bit itself was deeper than my frame. So that's why it was propped up on a, a board and, and clamped down. Now I'm squaring up the edges. I've freshly sharpened my chisels. So I was kind of enjoying that. Um, I, I'll have a, not a review per se, video of the new Tormac sharpener. Um, that I picked up, but kind of my, my impressions. Anyways, I, I think that might be a new series that I call, you know, Review That. So this will be Make This, and then there will be a Review That, where I kind of talk about the tools that I use and what I like, what I don't like. Any tools that I've bought that I don't use would probably be covered in that too. But I'm just working my way back slowly, probably using my chisels more delicately than I had to just because I was enjoying getting really fine shavings with almost no effort. Um, but this is a, a, a good you know, example of, of how to clear out a corner that's rounded from a router bit so that you can fit a square edge um, uh, piece of plexi or something else into it without having to round the edge of you know, your poster or uh, plywood. And I'm going to attach the top of this with uh, dominoes again. Could have gone with pocket holes. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, I have a follow-up I think I'm going to do on this. I've got an idea. I need to find a way to, to execute on it. But if I do, having dominoes here instead of pocket holes could, um, could make that follow-up easier. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, that's why I went with dominoes. I, I could have used pocket holes. Or I guess if you're real old school, you could have done it all in mortise and tenon. Or dowels. I mean, really, just 
biscuits would have been sufficient for this. This is not a real structural joint. Um, I do have a biscuit joiner. I just, ever since I got the Domino, I haven't really used it. Actually, now that I think about it, anyone in the market for a biscuit joiner? I might have one for sale. And I, I am using some just flattened boards to spread the load. Um, again, keeping that um, flat to the table makes it easier for sand up later. Now, uh, I do have a, a high tooth blade here to, um, to make this cut. With Plexi, the, the important thing I've found is um, don't, don't let it linger too long because it will overheat and start melting. Um, just you know, make the cut pretty quick. Don't force it through or anything. Plexi does want to go under my um, saw guide or my, my fence here, so I grabbed a piece of scrap wood, made sure that it, it would um, have less of a reveal. Then I made sure to account for the thickness of my spacer block. The finish on this project is three coats of semi-gloss spray rattle can lacquer. The, after the second coat, I went ahead and did a, a light hand sanding with 400 grit sandpaper to remove any dust nibs and ensure that the final coat was baby mud smooth. So now that I've got everything sprayed, I'm going to pull off the protective coating on the um, <laughs> plexiglass. You'll notice it's a little tight up there in that left corner. I'm going to use the plywood to um, force that down into position. Now the poster. Right now, this is all friction fit. Like I said, I've got a plan um, for a follow-up on this. I, I really want to do something with the arched area in the top. But here's the poster we got from the Ryman in Nashville. And now we have a poster frame that matches the, uh, the poster. Thanks for watching. To be updated in future videos, please subscribe.